Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, as per usual, let's go over Tesla, let's go over the market and let's figure out what has happened to this <laughs> this truly unbelievable stock, let's just say that. And uh, well, essentially what we can expect moving forward. So if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. It does help a lot. This is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. And of course, my membership session on YouTube is live. The link is down below for just $3.99, sorry, $2.99 a month. You can access to my post, updates, thoughts, options flow uh, on Tesla throughout the day as it's trading every single day the market is open. So all that aside, let's just jump right into it. Tesla is unfortunately, once again, just yet another day in the world of Tesla closing in the red. Uh, down about 2.34%, which is going to be putting us out, unfortunately, 176.50, uh, which is below, of course, as I'm sure you can tell, $180. And this is the first time we closed below $180 um, pretty much ever since this massive rally that we had back here, right? This was the last time we really traded, you know, closed back, below it, above it, whatever. But this is the first time ever since this situation back here in 2023 of May that we closed back below uh, $180 because we did it, we almost closed below over here, like not that long ago at this point. But we did recapture it today. We were very close to it. We actually pretty much came right up exactly $280, but unfortunately, we couldn't actually recapture it. And we got pretty much rejected exactly right off the 180 level and finished in a not the worst way possible, but absolutely not the best way possible whatsoever. So I think it's upsetting is yesterday when we closed, the aftermarket was looking great. We had a beautiful gap up aftermarket. And then like just not that long before the market opened, we sold all of it off and this completely ruined everything. This was going completely according to plan. And this would have been that little potential bounce that I was expecting, right? To like, again, 187 ish, as high as like 193. Unfortunately, pre-market this morning just said, uh, yes, yeah, psych. Uh, no, thank you. And then just completely sold off. That was very disappointing to see. I'm not going to lie. That definitely uh, was a bit of a mood killer. Now, with that being said, though, let's talk about what's, I mean, what's next, right? What what does this mean for Tesla? So there's two things that I, I, I kind of look at here that I'm potentially seeing that, again, for good news and the bad news. Let's talk about the bad news first. Let's talk about the bearish aspect first, right? What's the bearish aspect? Well, the bearish aspect is the fact that, well, first of all, Tesla is just substantially it's just weak it's it's pretty like impressively weak i would even argue it's very impressive how weak the stock is um but we did close below 180 we did close below 180 that is showing some weakness we closed out of pretty much the, a fresh low of ever since again way back here like almost a year ago now right fresh lows officially closing at those levels as well the daily macd is crossing over to the bearish side as well that's not the most ideal scenario whatsoever uh, either and it's just not looking too hot. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of momentum for Tesla, right? In the morning, there was a substantial amount of puts that came in 1 million, 1.1 million, 2.1 million for this coming, uh, sorry, next Friday, which I'm assuming they took profit on. I mean, you never know the, the way how weak Tesla is. Maybe they're still holding it. Who knows? No one, no, no one knows for sure. But there's a chance that they did close it because Tesla, like I said, you know, it did start off, you know, in the low 180s and then it pretty much sold off to 174. So when they entered that, if they just held that and entered or exited close to the lows of the day, they made quite a killing on that. Honestly, just within a couple of hours of trading, which is very impressive. But that's kind of the bad news right now. Let's talk about the good news and then we'll talk about the overall picture. The good news is, uh, well, first and foremost, we still are roughly holding this overall level. Like we aren't. We did go below the low over here. So this low back here was, uh, uh, what was it? It's 175 pretty much on the dot, right? We did go below today. So we did set a fresh lower low technically in terms of just price action, which isn't good, but we didn't close below this level. So we are still holding above this level, which at least is something. It's not, I mean, at this point, we're just kind of, you know, <laughs> we're we're just taking what we can get at this point as, as bulls, of course. But, you know, we, we are holding above it, which essentially is this green box, right? As long as this green box holds, that's fine. On top of that, there is some very meaningful support not too far below us. So if Tesla does continue to bleed, which it very much looks like it very much can continue to bleed, that is not unlikely whatsoever. There is some, in theory, of course, significant support below us, which of course is going to be once again to the bottom of this channel that we are, of course, in for this still potential bull flag. It's looking less and less likely of a bull flag, but technically it's still still has the, the makings of a bull flag as long as you know we're essentially within this massive massive channel which we're again are at the bottom of it once again right and we are arguably and today so far we roughly bounced off of the upper part of the bottom of the channel which is the green line of the bottom of this channel right which we have done before we bounced off of the before but it can go as low as to the red line of the bottom of the channel which kind of what we did back here right we bounced off once for the green line here then we went to the red line right same idea right so again we're very close to massive support, which is pretty much in the very, very low 170s, like 172-ish. Let's say tomorrow it'll be pretty much right, right around the same level, like 172-ish. But if we go to the bottom of the red line, 
you know, it should be also, in theory, massive support. Though, unfortunately, that does mean Tesla can still move down to about 165. It still leaves room for about a move that low, which would be about another 6% drop from here, which at this point just feels, honestly, just bring in the pain, right? Just, at this point, it just kind of feels like you're getting kicked in the nutsack and you're just kind of used to it at this point, aren't you? You're just kind of starting to feel numb to the pain. Um, so, you know, it is what it is, right? But keep in mind that we are approaching some pretty substantial support for Tesla that should, in theory, hold for a bounce. Now, if it doesn't, this is where we're going to start looking at the overall picture. That's kind of a mix of bearish and bullishes. If it doesn't, if we do come down to about 165, roughly, let's say, and let's say we start even losing that, which is not impossible. It's not impossible. But let's say we do start losing that. And let's say we start losing this bullish channel. We start falling below this channel, which I, I really hope doesn't happen. But it's absolutely a possibility, right? Well, obviously, what that means is we're coming back down to about the 150s, at least. If not, so as low as about the one, uh, 140 to a, a potentially peaking our head into the 130s, right? We, don't forget, we have a massive gap here sitting at 143. Completely, you know, it is not impossible to fill this gap. That is a possibility. But of course, that would mean that we would have to start losing this bullish channel, which again is a possibility. I don't think it's a high possibility. I don't think, I personally think there's a higher chance we bounce off of the bottom of this channel. So, like again, 170 to 165 roughly. But again, with the way the stock is and with the way the market is potentially looking to start selling off, you never know, of course, you know, maybe not yet. But again, ruling that out entirely, if you're a bull, uh, well, you're a fool if you do that, in my opinion. There is a very real possibility that it does happen. But again, like I said, we are entering very, very strong, in theory, strong support at the bottom of this channel. Now, if you zoom out, you can see this. Ignore the top uh, the top ch channel part for, for a second and look at it like this. Use this bottom channel here and use this yellow line. We are approaching what looks to be potentially from here to here, a tight scenario where, you know, if we do get a bounce from this general area, let's say, you know, from this one low 170s-ish area, maybe even starting tomorrow, who knows? But let's say we do get a bounce from this rough area. I do think that is a possibility that we get a bounce to somewhere around the mid to potentially uh, low-ish, depending on when it happens, 190s. Sorry, mid 180s to low 190s which would essentially come back to the top of this uh, yellow line as the resistance, because this resistance is of, course, is, of course, a thing, right? Ever since we were back all the way up here, you know, we fell, then we came back up again, and now this is acting at pretty much the resistance for this downtrend that has started ever since the uh, 265s, roughly. So it pretty much comes down to, in my opinion, it's very simple. It really comes down to which breaks first. Do we break the bottom of this channel, and then most likely we're coming back down to 150s, 140s, or do we instead break out of this yellow uh, resistance line, essentially, this downtrend line. And then if that happens, I think, you know, it wouldn't be shocking to me if we come up to about the 230s, if not maybe to the top of the channel, which would be putting us out around the 240s. Like that really wouldn't completely shock me, but it really just comes down to which one snaps first. One of them will snap first, and we are starting to enter some pretty tight territory, but it will looks like it will still take some time for this to actually play out. Keep that in mind, right? Because we can still easily zigzag from here. Like we can still, for instance, maybe go down a little bit more. So let me go ahead and, right? We can, why is it? doing it we can go down a little bit more then we can bounce from here we can get a zigzag up to around you know like high ish 180s also a possibility this would happen sometime in like just the second half of march potentially and then from here you know we can easily just come down like this and break down below or obviously the other option is well we do come down let's say for instance as a, just a, as a rough example we do come down here and then we come back up here then maybe we come down once again and then we break out like this is also a possibility right so it really just depends on which of these resistance slash support levels which are these trend lines if you will snaps first one of them will snap the question is which one nobody knows but in my opinion i honestly think it's a pretty equal chance that they both snap i would probably give it a slightly higher chance that we snap above the yellow line than the, than the bottom one but it's such a small difference that it's it honestly feels like it's a coin flip at this point you just kind of wait and see you know what i mean so that's kind of the way i'm looking at it but i don't like the fact that the macd on the daily flip bullish now with that being said there's a few caveats here if we do come down to this let's say a level and let's say we do get a bounce and let's say we do come up to this you know this uh, uh yellow trend line the good news is the fact that as long as we hold this 170s to 165 ish level we are still setting up a bullish divergence, a very nice looking bullish divergence on the daily. Because again, as this kind of level over here is essentially going to be doing this, making lower lows, what is the RSI doing? Even if we come down a little bit further, it'll look something like this, right? Even if we come down further, it'll probably look something like this instead of me going, dude, can I please click this? What's going on? Jesus. It looks something like this, right? At the very least, like I'm very confident as long as this bottom channel holds, we will set a higher low on the RSI. I'm extremely confident about that, which would be a nice looking bullish divergence on the daily chart, which is significant in my opinion. 
And then, of course, you have the weekly chart. Same idea. This shows like a more clearer picture where the weekly chart is showing us inside that support right now. So that's good to know, right? We're in that general area that should act as a support. But we're also setting up a bullish divergence on the weekly, right? This little situation that we find ourselves in. Same concept. Uh, if I take, uh, I shall do this thing, right? Well, that's just, okay, that's literally just an up arrow. Uh, same concept, right? If we just take this, again, we're downtrending, making lower lows, while the RSI on the weekly chart also doing pretty much the exact same thing as the daily, making so far higher lows while we're making obvious lower lows. So some bullish divergences are setting up here. Is it going to be enough, though? That's the question, right? That's still, of course, the question uh, that we're going to be waiting to see. The Williams percent meter is still showing us very much oversold. The stochastic on the weekly oversold. So we're you know, oversold in a lot of metrics here, but, you know, we can stay oversold for a long time. It doesn't mean that it has to bounce here. But again, looking at it strictly through technicals and, you know, where the support levels are, if there is a place to bounce, man, it's we're definitely around it, if not a little bit lower than where we are right now. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, moving over to options flow, like I said, start off the day pretty bearish. But towards the end of the day, we got a lot of bullish flow, right? We had, especially this line right here, a lot of bullish flow, specifically for March 22nd. A lot of bullish flow for that day specifically. We had a lot of flow here. So 400K, 400K, pretty much all 400K, somewhere in the $400,000. Someone came in with a lot of uh, uh, calls for that for March 22nd of, of course, this year. 175 calls. So... Someone thinks that we're looking for a bounce pretty soon, you know, maybe not necessarily tomorrow, but pretty darn soon. So we'll see if they're right, of course, but, you know, we've seen a lot of bulls come in like this that have gotten smoked. That Tesla has just said, yeah, I think I want to keep going down. And Tesla just kept going down. And, the, and those calls are probably getting absolutely toasted right now. So take it as you will, obviously with a grain of salt, but... Uh, also, 15-minute chart, still showing a bullish divergence as well. Same concept, right? As we're making higher lows on the RSI, stock is, of course, ever since here, is making pretty much lower lows. That's a good sign as well. And I believe the same thing is happening on the 65-minute chart. It looks a little cleaner here too, but same idea. On this kind of smaller time frame, right? As we're also making lower lows. RSI also making higher lows. Oops, where is it? This one here right? Making higher lows. So that's also a good sign. So we are seeing some potential signs of getting at least relatively close to at least a temporary bottom, right? Especially with the support channel at the bottom as well. That's not too far below us that we're kind of barely touching right now. So we'll see how that plays out. But, you know, this is quite a situation that, in my opinion, if you're someone that's extremely conservative and you're not someone that likes to catch falling knives or just try to time anything like that and you want to just be very safe about it and just kind of wait and let the market decide where Tesla's going next, in my opinion, this is the best way to do it, right? You have the bottom channel here. You have the yellow line here. Whichever one snaps, we're going in that respective direction most likely for the next couple of months. That's just the way to look at it, in my opinion, as well. So, yeah. With all that being said and done, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button. But if I had to take a wild guess as to what's going to be happening next, again, I personally believe something along the lines of, you know, potentially fall a little bit further, maybe into the low 170s, maybe even peak our head into the 160s. Come to the bottom of this channel, right, somewhere around the vicinity of it, and they get a bounce from there. I think we'll get a bounce from here. I think we'll come back up to somewhere around the mid to high 180s to retest this yellow trend line. And then from there, we'll see. We either reject and continue lower, and then maybe this finally snaps, or we, we break through it. Maybe we reject, come back down to the channel again, and then it gets really tight, and then we really have to pick a direction. But ultimately, at the very least, I think you know we should get a bounce somewhat soon, I'm hoping for, off of the bottom of the channel, to most likely to the retest the yellow line here. And then from there, it's going to really start getting interesting and, you know, the market will start looking for a place for Tesla to decide as to, you know, what's going to happen for the next few months with this pretty uh, disappointing stock. Let's just say that. But yeah, with all that being said and done, that's kind of what I'm seeing right now. So let me know what you think down below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button. And as usual, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.